Have you ever tried to sculpt pieces in Blender? But every time you sculpt, it either ends up not looking right or you even quit before you finish a sculpt. I spent years trying to figure out how I could get good at sculpting pieces in Blender and I thought I needed to know more about anatomy. I thought there were some brushes I could use to make my sculpts look better. But after trying all of that, none of it actually worked. But the solution I found to this was boring. So boring that I kept skipping over it. And that solution is the fundamentals. This stuff is so boring that I don't even consider putting them in my YouTube videos. But I'm going to change that right now. I'm going to show you a recording of one of my paid sculpting workshops I did a while back where I break down the fundamentals you absolutely need to know to get good at sculpting faces. And I know these fundamentals work because after I showed it to the students in this sculpting workshop, they were able to sculpt faces like this in just few hours. What I'm about to show you now was something my students paid for, but I'll give it to you for free because why not? Enjoy the video. I'm going to explain the forms of the head right now. And I'm going to break this down in the easiest way possible so that you guys can understand sculpting. First off, you need to realize that the head is broken up into the cranium and the jaw. For any head that you look at, you can just break it down into the cranium and the jaw. For any head you take a look at, break it down into the cranium and the jaw. That's the base shape of the head. For any head you're going to look at, break it down into a cranium and a wedge attached, which is the jaw. For any head at all, just keep that in mind. So that's the basic form of the head. So in Blender, when you're starting out, start out with the cranium and then you pull out the jaw. Once you have that in place, the next thing that's going to determine how good your sculpt looks is if you're able to get the planes of the head right on your character. So what exactly is the planes of the head? On every head, we have planes and these planes make the hair look three-dimensional. So let's just simplify it. The planes of the head that I like to keep in mind always when I'm sculpting are the planes of the eyes, the planes of the forehead, we have the planes of the temporal region right here, which is the side of the head right here. Then we have this side of the face, we also have the other side of the face, and then we have the chin. So these are the planes that you should keep in mind when you start sculpting the planes of the head. I'm going to go over this again when we actually start sculpting, but this is what you want to keep in mind. The nose is one of them, but it's always like an add-on. You add that on later on, but the ones I mentioned earlier are the ones that you need to keep in mind. So the planes around the eyes, the planes of the forehead, the planes of the temple region, the side of the jaw, and the chin. That's all you need to keep in mind when sculpting heads. If you can get these planes right when you go into 3D, the rest of the sculpting is going to be really easy. All right, so let me just recap what I said for the forms of the head. Every head is broken down into a jaw and a cranium. And then I said, if you can break down the planes of the head, if you can accurately represent the planes of the head of the face in 3D, then you'll be able to sculpt any character. Okay, let's move on to the forms of the eyelids and the eyes. When sculpting the eyelids in Blender, don't think about any other thing except these three lines I'm going to show you right now. So first off, you have this line that goes around here. And this line merges with the face, with the rest of the face. Then you have this second line, which is the edge of the eyelid, like so. And then you have this further line that merges or that touches the eyeball. These three lines are the only things you want to keep in mind when sculpting the eyelids. And you're going to see this in every other reference that you look at. So right here, this is sculpt from Yam Sculpt. You have this edge of the eyelid right here. Then you have this edge that merges with the face. And then you have this edge that touches the eyeball. These three edges are the most important edges when you're going to be sculpting the eyelids. So always make sure to keep this in mind. Now that you've seen that for this character, you're going to see it in every other character. Also, something to keep in mind is that on the eyeballs, the eyelids radiate out from the eyeballs. And this, we have something like this. So this part right here is exactly this line. This part, this edge is this second line. And then this edge that touches the eyeballs is this third line. 
Now, let's also look at some things to remember about the eyeballs. So, the eyeballs sit in sockets right here. If we take a look at the skull, an example from the skull here, you will notice that the eyeballs sit in sockets. The eyeballs are not flat on the face. They actually sit inside of sockets. We don't normally run into this problem if we get the block out right. But just always remember that the eyeballs sit inside of sockets. All right, that's everything you need to know about the eyes. And right here, you can see a good example of how to sculpt the eyes. So you carve in the area for the eyes. You sculpt out the planes, you add in the details, and then you refine your sculpt. This is going to be useful when we actually start sculpting eyes. Forms of the nose. Let's take a look at the forms of the nose. And the forms of the nose is very easy. Just think about it like a cube, like a triangulated cube. That's all it is. A triangulated cube is all the nose is. So it's just a cube attached to the face. That's all you need to know about the nose. It's not really complex stuff. It's very easy to get the nose. Most people don't get the nose wrong. So I'll leave it at that. When we're actually going to blend that task up to the nose, I'll come and explain some of this again. We'll come back to the ear. Let's take a look at the forms of the mouth. The mouth is another tricky part for sculpting characters. And what you want to remember about the mouth is that the mouth actually works like the eyelids because the mouth actually wraps around the teeth. So right here, you see when you want to start creating the mouth, you should actually bulge it out a little bit because the mouth wraps around the teeth. Always make sure to keep that in mind. So you don't want the eyes to the sorry, you don't want the mouth to be on a flat plane. You actually want it to be three-dimensional or something like this. Okay. So here's an example of how you sculpt the mouth. You just bulge out the area where the mouth would be. You sculpt in the planes of the upper lip and the lower lip. You add in some details and then you refine those details. So anytime you look at a mouth, you're trying to sculpt the mouth, just think of it as two planes. The top and the bottom plane. That's all you need to think of. And you also see that for any other reference that you have. All right. The ears are very easy to do also. Just think of the ears as a, from the front view, the ears is a triangle attached to the ear. More or less, that's what the ears are. Just a triangle attached to the side of the face. And also from the top view is also another triangle. So just keep this in mind when you start sculpting the ears. That's all you need to know for the ears right now. We'll come back when we actually, so tomorrow when we actually start sculpting these feature features, we'll come back and look at them a lot more. All right. That is everything you need to know about sculpting faces, about the forms of the face. Now we are actually going to go into Blender and we are going to do one, two, and three steps. Now, if you want to actually implement what I just showed you in this video, watch this video next where I actually show you how to sculpt faces in Blender. I'll catch you guys in the next one.